Who am I speaking with? Hi, I'm Chris Grove. I'm the CTO of Key Lime Thai. We're a computer consulting company here in the Chicago area. And you just gave a great presentation on Social Sign-In 101. And I think what I liked uh, most about it is just you really hit, hammered the basics. And at the very end, you got to the actual services that you can actually do. But I'm assuming people, when they do this, do make mistakes. What are the common pitfalls? Well, there are a lot of them, and uh, uh, starting with right where what you said, there are a lot of services to do this. Most people, I think, make the mistake right off the bat of not realizing that there are a lot of services for this, that a lot of the hard work has been done for you. A lot of people think, well, now I need to learn the Facebook API so people can log in with Facebook. Now I need to learn the Twitter API so people can log in with Twitter. You can do that, but it's definitely doing it the hard way. These days, there are a lot of libraries out there and service providers who do a lot of the heavy lifting for you, and for most companies, that's going to be a much better way to go. And you explained there are some that are free and some that are charged and some that are free for a period of time. And then if you get usage high, uh, they charge. So explain what they what those are and and you know when do prices start appearing? Well, for some of the uh, ways you could do this would be for, with an embedded API. Uh, to take one example, Hybrid Auth is a PHP. Uh, API. It's open source, so there's never any charge for it. You can use it to your heart's content. But you do have to download it and integrate it into your code base in your application itself. So if there are updates, if say Facebook changes its API and then Hybrid Auth needs to, to change its code, you have to download, it's up to you to download that code, reintegrate it into your code base. Uh, so it's a little more work on your side, but it is always going to be free. It's also limited to a single technology, something like PHP. Uh, there are also some services, uh, such as uh, Jandrain and Gigia, uh, which provide this as a web service. So you can call this from virtually any technology stack, and they do provide nice APIs uh, already made for all of the various uh, technologies, PHP, Java, .NET, Ruby. They provide entry points for all of that. But you're actually calling their web service, which then calls the various identity providers on their own, on its own. Uh, so the advantage here is that uh, it's always going to be on top of the latest changes and all the APIs. They're taking care of a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Uh, the disadvantage is these are all pay services. They're all free up to a point, but then after you pass some usage interval, they're going to start charging. Uh, and that varies a little bit. To take Janrain as an example, uh, they are free up to 2,500 users. Once your site exceeds 2,500 users authenticating through them, then it becomes $10 a month. Uh, once you pass 5,000 users, it becomes something higher. I don't know the numbers beyond that, but the prices do start increasing fairly steeply from there. And definitely look at the prices. I mean, you were mentioning that Gigi is like free for a while and then it jumps like into the thousands. Yes, exactly, which is one of the reasons we didn't ultimately go with them. Uh, so yeah, you have to examine the prices very carefully. Uh, the, the one good thing about this, though, people are always worried about lock-in. If I lock in with them and then find out that the price becomes unbearable because their usage went very high, uh, it, these things are so easy to use that it's not going to be that hard to change to another one if you absolutely have to later. So that's something to keep in mind as well.